When I ran a bike team that targeted bike thieves who were stealing bikes from Isle of Man TT race goers, we managed to cut the number of bikes down that were stolen from 17 down to three. Even then though, I knew that the police on their own couldn't do this. They needed help from the public. Well, I'm down in London tonight to see how some of those members of the public have taken it on themselves to try and get stolen bikes back. Yeah, so no, this is, you know, we're not in a tough part of London, we're in Kensington, which is quite a wealthy place, because um, they know that. They've stolen this, and they've brought it to a nice part of London, so that nobody who sees it questions the fact that it's legitimate. How did you find out uh, the spike was here? Yeah, we've got somebody in the area that uh, was working and just contacted us through social media, yeah. saying, oh, I've found this bike, it looks suspicious, sent us a few pictures. We ran the, the a check on the reg, and it comes back as stolen two days ago. Um, so you've literally got eyes and ears everywhere, haven't you? Yeah, we've got about 80,000 eyes and ears uh, across the UK. Um, we've got people living in the States that are sick of it and that are contacting us. Um, you know, we always, any information about actual crime will pass to the police, but things like this, um, you know, we can be that step to helping the victim. This has got no forensic opportunities at all. This is parked up in the street. If anybody's prints were on that bike, their defence would be it was parked up, I sat on it for fun and I left. Yeah. And if we called the police now, if I called 101, we'd yeah. be sitting here for an hour, an hour and a half before yeah. it went down to the borough, and the borough would probably come back and say, we'll attend, and they would attend in three days' time. Right. Um, that's really? not what they'll tell you, but that's the reality of the situation. Yeah. Whereas in this case, this bike, I'm hoping will be in our van in the next half an hour. Yep. We're back at the owner's house in about an hour. Um, this is a brand new bike. It's a 17-plate bike. Um, you know, it's got very little damage. It's got the steering lock damaged. That's it. There's no ignition damage. You can see they haven't even tried to hotwire it. They haven't cut any cables. They've opened the seat, smashed the steering lock, and off they go. Yeah, they opened the seat just to check for a tracker unit. So, uh -huh. got data check on it. It's a built system with codes. But uh, we don't even know if it has a tracker, actually. That's why they left it here for maybe to come back later on. Because they know that with a few tools in a car park at night is not where you start a bike. You come back with the right kit, you plug it in, you bypass the immobiliser. Um, Organised criminals, really. So these guys might well have the network to actually sell this bike. Yeah. A lot of them, it's 50-50. You know, if they don't sell it, they'll just kind of ride around on it, commit further crime. Um, but yeah, these aren't kiddies. You know, these guys will have been pretty determined thieves. You can mm -hmm. see they had a lock on the front, yeah. and they've angle grinded that off. Because you've just them. spoke to the owner now, haven't you? And he's, yeah, he's yeah, said he's, you can take it back. He's really key. So he's given me authority to lift the bike. Yeah. So I don't need any further authority. I've got authority from the owner. I'm taking Brilliant. his property for him. Cool. Um, Who would you give that phone to? So this is in two copies. So we normally keep one, give one to the victim, and we'll send a picture of it to the Met. Yep. Um, whether they action that or not, it's up to them. But it lists where we found the bike, any damage, the CAD reference number from the call, yep. make, model, colour, VIN number, reg, and then where we've delivered the bike. Right, so I'm in Kensington, only met the guys from Stolen Recovery London and an hour ago. We've got an outstanding stolen Yamaha MT-07 Tracer. It's on a 17 plate, it's been stolen two days ago. Uh, we've recovered it within about an hour or so. Apparently the police know about this. It was phoned into the police first. Uh, they're not here, they're busy. These guys have acted really quick. Got the bike in the back of the van, we're gonna go and see the owner. Your bike's just been stolen. When yeah. was it stolen? It was 11 minutes past three and it took them about five minutes. Was there a CCTV or anything of it being taken or is it just... Yeah, the CCTV. Is there, yeah? Clear and all the rest of it. A DPD driver spoke to them for about 30 seconds while they were right. taking the bike. Did you actually spoken to a police officer or is it just all no, online? I just did it online because I couldn't get anyone last night. And have you had a, have you had a reply to it? Uh, I've had the case logged but I haven't had any reply other than the police phoning to say that the bike had been found.
crime ha has dropped massively, isn't it? I think it was, yeah. Yeah, 57% yeah, since, yeah, yeah. Since, the start, since Venice started doing the Scorpion tactics. But theft so, has only gone down 20. Yeah, down to 8,800, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you think that's going to fall again? Well, it might. Now that the, that the enabled has gone down so much, I'm hoping that some of those resources can be deployed to kind of the theft itself. You're almost the first contact that people are getting in relation to the theft of their yeah, bikes, aren't you? Yeah. If they've reported it online, for example, the first contact they get is, we've got your bike. You know, and Amazing. to them, it's like, wow, this, you know, they can't believe it. Because they hear stories of these bikes being chopped up within hours of the theft, yeah. and off in the other side of the world. It doesn't happen. A lot of the time, this is far from unique. You know, right. these bikes being parked up around the corner. A lot of the bigger bikes, get parked up. But I bet you get people telling you the exact story of how their bike was stolen. Oh yeah, and it's it... the same story every time. Yeah, so while we were at the last bike, yeah. we were sort of sorting that out, um, Intel came in, so the Intel came in about an hour and a half ago, yeah. around that. Um, we've tried to obviously cross London at rush hour, which is never easy. Yeah. Um, and we've come for a moped, so it's a black moped. I'll show you the picture there. So um, it's got a registration plate on it. Um, we were also provided with pictures of the VIN number, the chassis number yeah. that's stamped in. We ran a check on that and it comes back to a different registration. Uh, the yeah. plate that's currently on the bike comes back to a white bike. Um, to us, that's enough grounds to actually come and have a look. Yeah. Um, we suspect it's been nicked today and it just isn't coming up on the database as right. stolen yet. Yeah. So the guy this is one of our guys in our network. He knows exactly where the, the, the VIN is, so he took a picture of the VIN, sent it to us. We ran a check on the VIN, and it came back with a different registration than what's on the bike. And um, one of your eyes and ears has taken a picture of it? Yeah, so he's been down here, he's taken a couple of pictures of the bike. So where was um, that parked? Can you show, can we, so it was parked just around here. Um, it was just on the corner there, uh, and it's gone. I mean, that, that bigger bike we had, um, had data tag on, didn't they? Had a security yeah. marking on it. Yeah. But a lot of scooters don't. They don't have data tag, do they? No, they, don't, they don't have any sort of security marking on them. There is that organised gang activity out there. So the big bikes are being picked up and they're being shipped out of the country or broken down for parts and sold. The smaller mopeds are used by the kind of the younger guys to steal bigger bikes mm -hmm. and things like that. You know, we're aware of certain places that are kind of stripping down the bikes and selling on the parts. And do you pass that information on to the police? When you yeah, go? we yeah. do. Problem comes from the fact that the stuff that we get given wouldn't meet the sort of evidentiary threshold that the police would require. Basically, take the value of the bike, take 10 to 15% of it and spend it on security good security. This is a lock that we carry just in case we have to secure a bike. Okay. And this is what we use on our private vehicles. I think the thieves are much better at securing bikes than the owners. We'd normally expect to find recently stolen bikes parked up somewhere out of the way with a cover and a fair amount of security on them. Um, because the last thing you want is somebody else coming to steal your stolen bike. You can see some of these guys on stolen bikes and they're wearing high-vis jackets or polite vests. We've seen people with polite vests with the blue Battenberg on the back. Do you find that people are just maybe trying to blend in? If you ride around looking like you've just done bike safe, uh, then nobody's ever going to blink. expect kind of money or you know an OB well an OB would be nice but uh, <laughs> you know we don't really expect anything from this we well, the only thing we expect is kind of not not being treated as if we were part of the problem you know we want to build a relationship with the police where they know who we are they already do know who we are because we've been very open with them mm -hmm. um, we don't want special treatment by the police we don't want friendship with the police all we want is when we call them they know exactly who we are and they help us straight away. You know, the, our biggest obstacle at the moment is, look, call the owner, give the owner my phone number, that way you're not breaching data protection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm giving you authority to release my number. As soon as the owner calls me, gives me authority to take the bike, I'll lift it, drop it off. Simple. We've never screwed up an active investigation. We've never um, hurt anybody. We've never trashed a bike by accident. 
We've never given the wrong bike to the wrong person. Do you deter crime or are you a vigilante looking to get criminals? My, I value my life higher than a moped. I value his life higher than a moped. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not police officers. We've got no powers to investigate. We've got no real powers of arrest. We don't carry the right equipment. You know, I see police officers getting assaulted daily and they carry a lot more equipment than we do. So yeah. we're not going to put ourselves at risk for this. It's not worth it. You know, the bikes we deal with, this is quite a unique one where the registration is still the correct registration. Mm -hmm. 70, 80 percent of the bikes we deal with have been re-registered. Uh, they've altered the VIN sometimes. So we're dealing with bikes that aren't on anybody's radar. Nobody's out there looking for them. You know, some of the more proactive traffic officers and teams will check bikes they come into contact with, but neighborhood teams are not out there checking VINs on a daily basis. You know, they're checking the registrations and saying, oh, it's clear. suspicious so he sent a picture of it this is it's like the motorbike parking uh -huh. bay yeah we want to check it and it came as a stolen did you actually get to that or no we no. the guy we asked for a double check if right was still there yeah because we wanted to attend but it wasn't so it was a stolen 20 seconds so that bike is still out there and it's still out there tonight. being used for the, any other crimes because that's coming in all that intel's coming into you it would be amazing we and, can, and you can, you can have attend them immediately. I'm going to go and check this bike. Done. Let's go on no registration, please. So we need to check the VIN number. And where's that? Let's so go and check that bike. But yeah, it's half an hour away. It's normal for us, you know, going up and down the city yeah. <laughs> from corner to corner. <laughs> There's no plate left, but check the VIN, um, and it comes back with no insurance, uh, no MOT, no tax. It just looks like a pool bike, doesn't it? There's maybe uh, someone's just got it for how, however means they've got it. Might be stolen. Nobody's reported it because it's worthless. It's a potential for someone else. Just another key can come and just move yeah. it around. That's right. Yeah. And they're away. Who knows where that goes to? Then you might be looking at somebody being hurt and a crash on it exactly. on the road and all the the consequences that has for us and you and you wouldn't um you wouldn't take this away normally would you no yeah if there is no report or anything there is nothing that we can do yeah to ignore it. yeah it's just gone midnight we're in tooting and uh, the, the lads have been told about this bike here it's an x city 125 it's a 59 plate the plate's missed on it though but it's not reported stolen but it is shown on their systems as no tax no mot no insurance it's been tampered with a little bit on the on the wiring, uh, but it's not reported stolen. It's here. Somebody could potentially start it and take it away. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, it is just an old bike at the side of the road. So they're just phoning the police now to say that this is here, uh, and let the police deal with it in, the, in their own way. And what time do you start normal work? I usually kind of get up for work about six. So, so that's in about five and a half hours. Yes. Yeah, so by the time we get home. <laughs> probably three, four hours sleep and back out. Back is work and then yeah. same again tomorrow night? Yeah, most likely. It kind of depends on what comes in. So if, if we can, we'll have an, an wow. evening off. Um, but we never count on those. So, you know, we're, what are we, Wednesday, Thursday, today, we're sort of gearing up for the weekend. And then the weekend will probably be quite manic. So Friday is usually an all-nighter. Uh, it just wow. depends on what's in. On what's happening, yeah. Stuff like this takes a lot of resources. Yeah. And at the end of the day, there's nothing there but you know the one we did earlier on is kind of good enough for for an entire evening. what a great night what a yeah. great night me big bikes yeah. like that and to find a, a stolen one and then to get it back to the yeah. get it back to the guy as well it's just so variable a few weeks ago um i think when we calculated it, it was about 50 grand worth of bikes on a weekend on a weekend ktm bmw the ducati yeah. awesome. you start adding them up and it's pretty crazy and then you do weeks where it's just mopeds and then back onto the big bikes it kind of just depends when we see something in this specific area it's always worth a check because mm. is it the same guys operating again? Yeah. The KLE we did recently was we're ninety eight percent sure it's them. You know, we could have opened the seat and the you know anything under there. So it's always there. worth yeah. checking.
we just spent all night with the guys there from about four o'clock uh, yesterday afternoon. It's just gone one o'clock in the morning now. And we've been to four bikes, one stolen, two which probably were stolen and had gone before we got there. Uh, and another one which, to all intents and purposes, is just some sort of uh, pool vehicle that was left out on the street. The guys are working really hard, I think. They're out all night after they've worked all day. We've seen our bike being recovered there tonight. A stolen bike, we've met the victim. The only contact that the victim's had with anybody about the theft of his bike, face to face, is with the guys. For them, I think they're doing a great job. They even said themselves to me, though, they don't think they're reducing crime. The Metropolitan Police are reducing crime. Crime's reducing right the way across uh, the country at the moment and in London as well. What they are doing is raising awareness and raising that awareness also helps to reduce crime. As well as the guys doing their bit, you can do your bit as well. Don't leave your bike on its own without any form of security. Buy the best you can, uh, whether you lock it, chain it, cover it. Do something to make sure your bike isn't the easy target on a street.